for your safety, remember to always read the instruction manual carefully, paying particular attention to warnings and precautions before installing or making changes to any pump. Always follow safety procedures including the use of proper clothing, eye, and face protection. This video will cover basic pump operation and pump features. Pump programming. To begin, we will go over the programming mode for the pump. You can see that the on light is orange to indicate that the pump is on standby mode. On the screen, you can see 100% in MAN, which represents manual mode. The top left is the power button, the bottom left is the external button, which is for external control. And on the right, you have an up and down arrow and a display button. To put the pump in external mode, you want to hit the external button. From the factory, the pump is typically in division mode, which is indicated in the top left corner of the screen with a DIV. We want to hold down the external button until the screen changes, and then we want to use our up and down arrows to select multiplication. Once we land on multiplication, we want to hit external. Here, we will select the number of times the pump will stroke for each signal it receives. You can see at the top, multiply, indicated with the M-U-L-T, then we have a times one on the screen. For this setup, we will put it to two strokes for every signal. Once you have selected the number of strokes, hit the external button, then we'll hit the power button. Now we are in external mode. You can see that we have a green light, indicating the pump is waiting for a signal. We have the M-U-L-T, indicating multiplication, and the number two, indicating two strokes per signal. To put the pump in standby mode, hit the power button one time. Here you can see we have an orange light indicating standby mode. When you're setting up your pump, it is always important to see 100% displayed on the screen in manual mode. If your pump is not set at 100%, use the up and down arrows to cycle and get to 100%. The pump will not function correctly if it is not set at 100%. The bottom port underneath the power cord is where the pump connector will go coming from the water meter. The black wire, typically the common wire, goes to terminal 5. The red wire, typically the signal wire, goes to terminal 2. Here is the wet end of the pump. Now to hook up the discharge tubing. On top of the pump head, there are two outlets. The one on the right is the discharge outlet, normally indicated with a red plug from the factory and a sticker on the compression nut. And the one on the left is the air bleed, or the return port. Unscrew the discharge valve cap. Remove the red cap from the factory. Then, slide the compression nut over. Lastly, put the hose barb on. Next, let's take a look at your safety check valve, which will come in the kit. In the middle of the safety check valve is a directional arrow. Make sure the arrow is pointed in the right direction. In our case, the arrow is pointed this way. The safety check should be placed in line between the pump and the injection valve. Slide the compression fitting onto the end of the tubing. The tubing will go into the fitting about an inch and a quarter. Tighten this up by hand and then finish with one turn with pliers. Now we can install the injection valve. From the box, you will have an injection valve. Make sure you cut the injection valve off a quarter inch past the threads, where the black mark is. Put Teflon tape on the threads and screw it into the reaction T. Now we connect the tubing to the discharge valve. You want to have about 8 inches of tubing to go into the safety check. Pump setup. First, start by hooking up the suction line. In the box, you will have a ceramic weight and a foot valve. Start by placing the ceramic weight over the end of the tubing. Unscrew your foot valve cap. 
Place it over the tubing. Insert the barb into the tubing and tighten it with the nut. Drop this end down into the liquid. Now we will attach the suction side of the pump. Unscrew the cap on the bottom side of the pump. Remove the red stopper from the factory. Place the cap over the end of the tubing. Next, place the compression fitting over the tubing. And last, insert the barb into the edge of the tubing. Slide the locking piece up on the barb and connect it to the bottom side of the pump. Now connect the tubing to the air bleed return port and direct it back to the chemical drum. To prime the pump, loosen the nut two to three turns on top of the pump head for priming. Then hit the power button. You can see the green light flashing indicating that the pump is running. If you hit the power button again, you will put the pump back in standby mode. To go back to external mode, hit the external button one time. To also prime the pump from this setting, you can hold down both the up and the down arrows at the same time to prime the pump. Once primed, snug the air bleed knob on top of the pump, being careful not to over tighten. Simply release to stop priming. Thank you for watching the instructional video on how to set up your disinfection on demand system pump, and we hope this video was helpful. For more information on this pump, refer to the manual or contact your local authorized representative. Also, feel free to visit our website to explore more products, become a dealer, or contact us directly.